comes the rabbit. So what is happening people? So hey, we got another rabbit hunt for you today. It is December 19th and we're gonna title this video uh, training, how to train young dogs uh, in the Beagle Pack. And I could sit at my computer in my office and talk about training dogs for, you know, for eight solid hours, but uh, it'll probably be a little more exciting as I, we go along in the hunt today, we'll talk about getting new dogs started into the pack and I'll tell you some of the things that I've learned uh, over the years and some of the things I've saw training new dogs and entering into a pack. But All right, so this is Puddin. This is the newest member, and she's what, about a year? And yeah, about a year. She's about a year old. So this is the newest puppy we got entering into a pack, Puddin. Hey, first, hey, shout out. You guys did good. You sent me some of uh, your photos of your dogs. And... Uh, Love to see those beagles. And uh, so, hey, the first shout out, <clears throat> the first videos you'll see was sent to me by Lee Galloway from Goldsboro. And he has pictures of his dog. He's some pictures of his dog lot. He did a fantastic job of designing that dog lot. Hey, sometimes you got a really great dog lot. It makes life easier taking care of dogs. And you'll see the pictures of his dogs, uh, Lori, Betsy, Sally, and Maggie. Hey, big shout out to Lee for sending those photos. And uh, also the second set of photos you'll see is Justin uh, Hatton, Hatton from Dismal Swamp Beagles. And he's got six of fine looking beagles there uh, from Dismal Swamp Beagles. <laughs> Hey, big shout out to those guys for sending those pictures. Hey, today, uh, comment one thing we're going to do. What is the number one thing? What is the worst thing you can do for a new beagle? And my number one worst thing you can do for a new dog is leave him in the lot. He can't learn anything in that lot. You've got to get him out and get him on the ground. A dog has a lot to learn. So that is my number one thing worst thing you can do for a dog is to leave him in the lot for an extended period of time. So hey guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click that like button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Wildlife Adventures. Hey, and comment below, send me those photos, I'll put my email address below, and uh, I might link it actually on the video here uh, today. So hey guys, let's go jump a rabbit. Any going down the edge of this big field, you see here, I'll show you where we're hunting. Uh, so right along in there, you got a lot of honeysuckles all the way down this edge. And then we're gonna go in the point of that field. And uh, there's some brush piles and stuff in there. And a lot of times we'll jump rabbits along this edge. And all these woods here are very open, so it's easy. I like uh, beginning the season hunting in here because you can actually see how your dogs is working the track. It's not like a thick cutover where you can only hear them. So that helps when uh, 
you're actually training some dogs. All right. Like I told you, you jump one down in them laps right down there. Going across that field. Let's get over there where we can see it. He went across that field, didn't he? Oh, he did. There's nothing no more satisfying to raise uh, puppies, whether you keep all of them or just keep one, and to actually get to see those dogs get out, break, jump, and pack, and develop into a good dog. Oh, uh, that's very satisfying to any dog owner that uh, bird hunts, rabbit hunts, deer hunts, coon hunts, and uh, so that's very satisfying. So one of the first mistakes that we made early on, um, so Trixie, you just seen in the video, Kenneth still has her sister. I had two of the others, and so one rabbit season, we, we started and we were breaking four young dogs at the same time. And uh, the problem with that is hard to keep your eyes on four young dogs at a time, because as you know, they may get on some trash, whether it's a coyote, a deer, whatever. And uh, so you may have to bump them. But if you have some old dogs in the crowd, they'll tell on them that they're actually on some trash. And so having just putting one in at a time gives you an opportunity uh, to keep an eye on that particular dog to see what he's doing, see if he's giving false mouth, trying to break too many puppies at one time. And uh, as you know, our season wasn't the greatest that year because uh, puppies have a lot to learn, especially on a turn. And, uh, but hey, it all worked out really well. So they've carried the rabbit off in this bottom. And they've checked him. So we'll have to give them some time to figure out what the rabbit did. I know it's some groundhog holes, and I hope it didn't run him in a hole. We'll give him a few minutes and let him circle and work his track out. Here comes a rabbit, y'all. Now you notice how them dogs are circling right here. All right, one of the reasons that rabbit sat there for a long time dropped a lot of scent molecules in that one area. They got him lined out now. So it looks like the rabbit has crossed the one in this hedgerow. I don't know if the rabbit come down this hedgerow or not. We'll see.
becomes a rabbit. He didn't come back across the field, went back down there where he was, Kenny. You hear me? Well, I guess he did. He couldn't stand it. <laughs> that old wall. Uh... Y'all have to forgive me. I can't see where this thing's pointing unless I put my glasses on. So, you see... Looks like the dog was just past that old lap pile. The dog come across, I mean the rabbit come across here somewhere. Yeah, here they come. Looks like a little bit of an overrun there. They're working the track pretty good. side of that hill and get away from me. Now, <clears throat> if you want to kill more if you want to kill more rabbits when you're out rabbit hunting, wherever, wherever they jumped a rabbit, if you'll just hang out pretty close to that spot and right behind me is where they've jumped that rabbit. They ran that rabbit down the bottom, across the creek, up the hill, back across the bottom, right back to that thicket out of that thicket, across this field down to a lap pile, out of the lap pile, back here, out of there, back across the creek, <clears throat> and come back. So that rabbit has came back here three times. Lots of times rabbit hunters want to follow the dogs. When the dogs take off that way, they want to follow the dogs out when most of the time the rabbit's out way out ahead of the dogs and it's going to make a loop right or left. And they're going to be standing out there where the dogs were, and the rabbit's going to be back here. So if you'll notice, all, the guy that kills the most rabbits usually will stay put wherever they jump the rabbits. Hey, that's just my tip for the day if you want to kill more rabbits. Kenny got the Kenny got the rabbit right there in his hand. That's a lot of blood like you stuck a tea. Like you stuck a tea, it's blood trails. I don't know if that's gonna pass them up or not. The the thing that I my opinion on the best thing for a puppy would be actually to have it bred in them. I mean, you know, you can you can take a chance, of course, and one out of so many will probably. But the best thing to do is have it have it bred in them. Have a good mom, a good dad that uh, would make a good puppy, and then along with that, uh, to have them training with dogs that are already broke. Uh, to do that, you expose them to what they need instead of, now instinct can help them a lot, but to have another dog that's broke in with the group, probably, that's probably the best thing you can do. So, see again, they jumped that rabbit right behind me. That rabbit has made a big old loop, went back across the bottom and come back. And I haven't moved anywhere, so that's why I say, if you want to kill more rabbits, 
just kind of hang out where they jumped the rabbit. And uh, here comes the dogs around here now. So we'll turn the camera on. We'll watch the dogs work the track coming by. Now again, when the dogs get to me, because I'm standing here and the rabbit basically ran right up under my feet here, they'll probably bother right here where I'm standing. Now I'm going to just stand still and give the dogs a chance to work the track. And pick it up. And the rabbit come right up under my feet right across this dirt place. And so we got dogs circling right here. And so these dogs should pick it up. The rabbit went come up underneath that log right there and went on back through the woods that way. So they got to work themselves through them laps right there. And then they'll be gone across the bottom. I saw him going back straight that way. He sat under them laps for a minute or so. Then he took off. We probably, let's see, between Kenny and I, his litter, we had, we've raised three litters of puppies. And the, you know, some people would just rather buy a dog. Uh, but what you get is we, we've had better luck with uh, raising our own puppies because if you raise a, a litter of dogs and get them trained, the dog kind of takes on your hunting personality if, if you kind of get what, what I'm talking about. So if you get a dog from somebody and the dog's a year and a half, two years old, you know, that dog is going to develop a personality or hunting style of that particular person and we have found over the years we bought some you know dogs from other people but it seems like the more solid dogs that we've had in the past 15 years has actually come from uh, dogs that we've actually raised uh, we had one set of puppies that we raised and a lot about all of them was females and matter of fact I think all of them was females the male died but you talking about mean, good gracious, they would fight. I mean, they, them jokers was mean. So the next litter, we chose, uh, we chose Ike, which was very uh, laid back style dog, very easy to handle. And then a female uh, tri-colored uh, blue tick dog that uh, Kenny had. And a very timid dog, very laid back. And those are some of the easiest handling uh, dogs that that we've got and Kenny still has two males and I still have two males so we have four out of the same litter and you can put all the males in the same lot they don't fight they don't fight over food and very easily easy handling dogs so if you raise your own puppies young dogs um, you can kind of uh, breed the dogs that um, that have the personality like you want out towards the uh, that little blind. <laughs> Just stand right there. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Some missing going on. It's too far. <laughs> yeah. Too far. 
Yeah, he put the juke on him up in that field when I had to turn and come straight back. Got it in that opening fit. Yeah. So hey guys, it's been a little while since uh, we last seen that rabbit go by us and the dogs kept on it. So when Kenny shot at the rabbit, he actually wounded it and the rabbit come right by us. So we was just going to let the dogs catch the rabbit. But anyway, the rabbit continued on and fortunately got in a hole and we didn't get the rabbit. The dogs didn't get the chance to get the rabbit either. So uh, we're getting ready to cut out here. It's almost 2 o'clock. So we kind of had to cut the short hunt short of the day. And uh, so hey, we're going to get out of here. Hey guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll probably release this video on Tuesday just prior to Christmas. Hey guys, I'll see you after Christmas with another video. Hey, and I hope you and your family have a wonderful Christmas. I hope the Lord blesses you during the Christmas holidays and keeps you safe from this COVID. And uh, hey guys, don't forget, drop me a line with those pictures of those beautiful beagles. And in the description box below, I'll leave my uh, email address. Hey guys, click that like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode of wildlife adventures and hey you remember it's a wild life and i'll see you in the field